Hello all and welcome to the reassembly video of the G&G M14 Mod Zero Enhanced Battle Rifle AEG marketed by G&G as the GR14 HPAS. In this video we will be reassembling the M14 AEG section by section, pointing out the tools required and some of the things to watch out for so you don't break or lose parts. The tools required for this disassembly are a 2mm hex key, a 2.5mm hex key, a 3mm hex key, a 4mm hex key, and not shown in the video, a small hammer. In the previous video I showed how to disassemble the entire AEG down to the gearbox. To reassemble the gearbox, start with the lower shell of the gearbox with the trigger contacts, spur and sector gears in place as shown. Now for the hardest part of this gearbox, the anti-reversal latch or ARL. The ARL for this AEG is proprietary to G&G's version 7 gearbox and comes in three pieces, which is a black latch, a silver mount and a spring. To fit the ARL, start by placing it into its relevant hole in the lower gearbox shell. Making sure that the long part of the spring is placed below the large nub that sticks out from the gearbox and ensure that the hooked part of the spring is around the latch and that both of those are on the left side of the silver pole as shown in the video. I will add that this piece will probably cause you the most frustration out of the entire gearbox as it will constantly want to pop out of place. To stop it from doing so, use a strong magnet on the outside of the gearbox shell but below the ARL to hold it in place. With the ARL back in place, Put the tappet plate spring, the tappet plate air nozzle back into the gearbox. Take care however as the tappet plate cam which meets a sector gear must be under the gear's shims. And then fit the cylinder assembly in. I will add that the tappet plate will constantly want to lift up and push the shims off the sector gear. With the above installed, replace the AEG spring back into the rear of the piston, followed by the spring guide. But do not tension them. Find a suitably large screwdriver and put this through the BB feeder. Ensure that the BB feeder's spring is in place and mount it back into the gearbox. In this video it is only held in place by gravity, friction and the weight of the screwdriver I have holding it down. Now this is where you will meet the frustration that is the ARL in this gearbox. Place the bevel gear back into place. If you do not do this with a magnet you will make this a lot harder for yourself. Finally, in order to close the gearbox, using a screwdriver, place this down the spring guide hole at the rear, tension up the spring, and then close the gearbox. Screw it all down to lock it in place, and then check that the bevel gear and the ARL are correctly aligned by looking where the motor would engage the bevel gear. Rotate the bevel gear a few times and watch if the ARL engages the bevel gear correctly. Keep rotating the bevel gear until you feel the initial tension of the tappet plate spring. Then, using the silver pin on the other side of the gearbox, decompress the spring to ensure the ARL is correctly engaged and working. With the gearbox fully assembled, get the motor with its cage, its mounting plate and the screws and fit the motor back onto the gearbox ensuring that it is the correct way around. Slide the mounting plate back into place and screw it all down. At this point you could test the gearbox and motor by plugging in a battery and pushing the metal piece forward as shown. Now, route all the wires around the correct place on down the side of the groove, then slide the decorative shroud back on top and screw it all down. Next is the trigger spring. Looking at it, you will notice it has two hooked ends with one longer than the other. Look at hook the short end of the spring onto the trigger piece and then hook the longer end into the middle hole on the motor mounting plate. The final piece to put back on is the bolt release catch. First, put this into place, then push the pin through it to lock it down. I then find it easier to put the catch into place first and then putting the spring in underneath 
using a small, thin flathead screwdriver to seat the spring, then compressing it underneath the catch until it sits in place. Insert the barrel assembly into the gearbox assembly. Once they're both fitted in place, screw down the two bolts provided to lock the whole thing together. Ensure that they are tightened sufficiently and then flip it over. From the top side end, install the bolt cover with the ball bearing to the right side of the whole thing. Then, slide the bolt handle on, making sure that the part relevant covers the ball bearing roller. In my previous video I showed how to remove this, but now you must reattach the fire selector bar back into place. Remember to flick the fire selector halfway between auto and semi in order to facilitate putting it back on. Put the bolt buffer tube back in and screw it into the bolt handle. Once you have done this, flip the assembly upside down and then feed the magazine retention catch and its spring back into the buffer tube. Take care how this spring fits into and the orientation of it back onto the gearbox and the barrel. Compress the spring over the pin first and then push it into the buffer tube. Fit it into place. You should all have now the barrel, barrel assembly, gearbox and motor all attached together as one. Set the lower receiver ready and get the barrel gearbox assembly and start by firstly ensuring all the wires are tucked in as best as possible. Hold them in place with your thumb or finger if required to do so. Then lower the gearbox in motor first and pushing back and down fit the gearbox into the lower receiver. Using a tool, push the remaining wire into the lower receiver, taking care not to pinch the wires, as this would cause a short circuit and may require the replacement of wires if necessary. Once the wires are successfully in place, push the barrel part down to fit the whole thing into the lower receiver. Now, using a hex key, screw the two bolts back into the side of the barrel to lock it in place. Next is the trigger assembly. At the rear of the trigger assembly is a small hook as pointed out by my thumb. Place this into the lug inside the AEG and then push the trigger guard as far forward as possible and lower the trigger assembly down. The trigger card guard should freely move backwards and forwards. If it feels jammed, you've put it in incorrectly. Push the trigger guard all the way in until it clicks in place. Try the safety and make sure it works as well as the trigger. At this point you could attach a battery and test the entire AEG. With the AEG the right way up, install the upper receiver's monolithic rail by placing it on top and then using the six screws bolting it down in place. Finally, install a battery, reattach the handguard, screw it down, load some BBs into a magazine, insert the magazine and the AEG is ready to fire. Well guys, this was the final video based on the G&G M14 EBR AEG. I have since sold this AEG to another person so I no longer own it anymore. Anyways, thank you for watching this video. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave any comments in the comments section down below or if you have any questions and I will try to respond to them. Once again, thank you.